So it's two people on the line right now from Camunda. Um, one is Niall. Um, Niall, uh, you, you heard him uh, introducing, is a consultant for us at Camunda. And I'm Nico. I'm working for Camunda as a software engineer, uh, and I'm here for the, like, I was actually the guy implementing the uh, initial version of Element templates as part of the, uh, um, as part of Camunda, uh, the Camunda modeler. And we're going to talk a bit about the, about the story of Element templates. Okay. How so, about we just do this? Well, actually, just, can you see that okay? Yeah. So we're going to do some monkey patching as uh, sometimes happening in, uh, in software engineering, it's going to work for us. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, we'll actually just go with we'll actually just go with this scenario now. I think we'll just try and see what we can do. Uh, so as Nico very kindly went ahead while I was having my technical issues, and he was sitting there very smugly with his Linux machine. Um, uh, I'm Niall Dean. Uh, I'm the guy who's going to be asking Nico some questions about templating, and Nico is the guy who knows the things about templating, or uh, Super Nick, as he's known in the office. By his very common nickname. Um, the agenda for today is um, going to be uh, in lovely BPMN is um, we're going to do my introduction, which I've managed to get through despite technical flaws. We're going to discuss the core ideas of the templating that we've implemented here. And then we're going to um, basically discuss how it works. So we're going to be discussing um, sort of how exactly this templating is created and what you see when it is created. Um, we'll get through that pretty quick because most of this, I I hope, is going to be a demo and Q&A. So I'll really quickly then sort of go into a demo of essentially creating, starting with a, a modeler I'm going to download uh, that I would have downloaded earlier. I'm going to create some templates and just show you uh, live how these templates come into action and how they're usable within the engine, uh, with, sorry, within the, uh, the, the Commander modeler. Um, so, and of course, then um, after the demo, uh, we'll probably leave hopefully at least 50, uh, 15 minutes or so for Q&A, um, which means you guys can send us questions. In fact, uh, you guys have access to the chat window. So if while I'm going through this, uh, you have some, um, some questions you'd love us to answer, uh, type them in there, and then we'll take a look at those when we actually get to the Q&A section of the, uh, of the presentation. Okay, great stuff. So... Um, now, speeding, uh, speeding ahead to the M uh, element template core idea. So um, starting down here, we're coming to BPM. Um, the core idea is that we already produce a, a pretty decent um, uh, generic BPM platform. And it's intended for software developers to make models executable. And uh, double click, sorry, one second. There we go, ah, much better, okay. Um, so we wanted to give these developers the ability to create templates so that our very generic BPM platform could then be used for domain specific, um, uses within sort of, um, big companies and that sort of thing. It'll mean that we can, what we like to call citizen developers are able to implement these models without doing, without needing to know stuff like uh, the Java class or whatever that happens to actually be running in the background. It can also ensure that everyone's using the same correct um, sort of validated reproducible uh, um, classes and UI and all of the other stuff. There's a lot of implementations. The final idea being that these citizen developers will then be able to actually create models for the end user. So we can actually have a, we have a, a, a scenario in which we have software developers uh, for, let's say, a company or for um, a group or a domain that can then create these templates for other people to use in order to uh, create really easy um, uh, models based on pre-existing, pre-tested um, uh, templates. You right? Okay. So shall I just sit stand? Is that right? A bit smaller? Is that right? Okay, super. So um, and Nico actually is the, 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 the man here who um, sort of came up with this... Uh, there we go. That's nicer. Uh, came up with this uh, idea, or the um, came up with the, the 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 core idea of how we're going to implement templates. It was a feature that got requested um, pretty early on in the um, 
modeler's existence. So, um, Nico, do you actually want to like mention how you came to this sort of standard and why you chose this method of implementation? Yeah, we we actually uh, were building uh, modeling tools for quite a long time. Like the first modeling tool we actually built was a, um, a BPMN modeling tool based on Eclipse. That's where we started, and that's what the stuff we provided to people for for years as part of uh, like yeah the Kamuna BPM offering. So um, we we switched to a mo more modern technology stack, and uh, still back then people could actually extend the the uh, the properties panel and also the the elements actually how they looked like. Um, to actually add that kind of domain specific information. So the idea like uh, have some someone provide custom tooling as part of like the modeler isn't isn't quite new. It's actually quite old. But uh, what we did at that time is like with Eclipse and everything it was really complicated. It was really complicated to actually uh, get started, actually provide custom elements, provide uh, as part of custom elements you're always going to provide like custom fields. So in the end, there's stuff that is technical Kamunda. Kamunda, we, we provide a lot of like information, input, output mapping into the task, out from the task, right? We provide like stuff like being able to asynchronously um, execute a task and so on and so forth. So a lot of stuff that is actually hidden behind uh, the BPMN scene. The BPMN, it looks really clean, but if you look at the properties panel, it's really complex. So even back then, the idea was to make it much simpler, like add an additional tab. What we did now is we, we wanted to reinvent the wheel. We wanted to like uh, actually rethink that whole stuff. And we wanted to make it much easier to for people to actually create custom templates for certain elements. And that's basically how everything started. Now we're at a point where we, 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 we actually have a, we have an implementation for element templates, as Niall's going to show uh, in, a, in, a, in a few seconds, which is just about JSON. It's just about configuration. It's not about programming anymore. And obviously, we're not finished there. We're not as powerful as we were before with this. You can develop everything you want. But we're much more powerful in terms of what people can achieve with a really quick time. So. The idea isn't quite new, but the, the, the way we built this is to make it as easily accessible for people as possible. And yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Nico. Yeah, I think um, another nice thing is that um, with the older modeler, um, I think I know from experience, creating those uh, custom templates was actually really tough. And uh, it, it, it involved a lot more work than maybe people were willing to give to create those templates. Um, and the, this new version is a lot easier. So um, another part of this core idea is, of course, the the, the users who we, we sort of see using this. And uh, the two main options would be um, big organizations with a central IT. Um, again, these are the kind of kinds of people who contacted us about this feature and who had the most interest in it. And the idea that they would have had would be, we would like to completely control how our processes get created from an execution point of view, uh, but we would like teams all over the corporate um, infrastructure to be able to use this. And that's a lot harder when you, uh, in the current guise of the modeler, where you would actually have, it's, it's, in, it's incredibly flexible, but actually probably a little bit too flexible um, in that sense. You want to like strip it down so, so users can really easily create these things. Another option, uh, another sort of client or, or customer that we had a lot of um, um, uh, uh, feedback from our uh, software vendors who do software as a service where they actually tend to um, offer the ability to create processes to users and then host those models uh, um, in, in the cloud or something to, for, for other use. And this is a really good um, idea for them. Uh, and that, that's, this is sort of the main target groups. Uh, so now actually on to looking at what the... Um, what this guy does. So we have on the right there some JSON that looks a bit cryptic right now, but I'll explain a lot more detail later on. On the left is how that is represent is when we create that, how that is represented in the modeler. So we see here that we have uh, the name of the task is, uh, the name of the template is uh, dedicated there. We've specified things like uh, a, a BPMN task, or, uh, a send task specifically. We've specified things about values and strings and also bindings. And that's kind of the real core of how this is actually working. What you're doing is you're binding these new definitions to existing come under parameters. Um, and uh, 
you do that with this JSON, which um, I think the very first question I get about this whenever I talk to it is that, yes, this is very, very well documented. So um, if you're wondering, uh, I'll show you before I start modeling where the documentation is. So you can look up all, all these um, names and uh, what, what properties you can add and that sort of thing. Um, the because this file is a JSON file that's actually kept in the directory along with the modeler, it basically means that's very, very easy to uh, update and maintain uh, from a corporate wide level. I guess Nico can probably expand on that because I think the initial idea was to create something that was uh, quite easy to just leave somewhere that someone else is kind of in charge of monitoring. The person who's actually modeling is not going to want to look at this JSON. The JSON is maintained by someone else. Do you want to maybe expand on that a little bit, Nico? Yeah, so the, as you said, so the, the, the model itself, it understands those templates whenever the templates are available, like at least like in two different locations. So either it can be like installed, like local to the user's data directory, wherever it is, or just right next to the model itself. So I'm I, like, my modeler doesn't understand a certain like domain specific stuff yet, but a colleague can actually send me the JSON, right? I install it and that's the moment when it actually gets available for my for me. So, and that's always applies for, for, for the actual domain um, I and my colleague are actually working on or whoever created those templates, right? I'm the one consuming. And someone else is actually the one uh, like like sending me that stuff. He built it. He verified it worked and together with the actual implementation of services and so on and so forth. And he's sending me that stuff or sending me the package modeler with it already like configured. And then I can just use it. Yeah, that's really nice. And another nice thing is, of course, that because all this is quite open and describable, I think one of the nice um, so side effects of that is that we can sort of get the community to maybe help in, let's say, for instance, creating available templates that are really, really common. Um, I think uh, Nico was telling me earlier that there's already sort of stuff started on something like a really generic uh, template for service tasks to send emails, for instance, something that is going to be really, really useful to add anyway. And these things can be really easily um, chosen from, let's say, some sort of list of community extensions and add it to the modeler that way. So even if you didn't want to create them yourself, you could always try and implement this way. Okay. Um, as I said, I will be actually writing this stuff very shortly. So that's when I'll actually go into what the details of all that is. But in the meantime, um, I think the point that we want to get across here is that the amount you can do with this JSON can really affect how the property pa properties panel um, uh, is uh, usability in terms of, let's say, for instance, um, non-technical users, for instance. Okay. Um, here are some use cases, actually, that we, I think, came up with our, uh, ourselves. And I think we have most of these uh, created, actually. These are all um, examples that we've actually uh, done in, um, in attempts to sort of come up with interesting use cases. So we see here, like, a very common one is uh, connectors, um, like Twitter and Salesforce and that. There's a few different bits and pieces there in connectors, but I think the thing that we sort of want to strive towards is connectors for things that you are not going to get out of the box. Stuff that you have a local system or let's say some sort of an, an, uh, some sort of internal external system that you actually use and communicate to all the time that you're not going to get a connector for in some other sort of off-the-shelf suite. Well, this thing is going to let you create this connector once off and then use this as the models um, for all models that you actually uh, create. We also have a really nice, um, a really, really nice uh, example that was done a little while ago uh, by, by Jakob. And that's actually where we could implement a business rules task to already launch a specifically designed and defined DMN table. And that's really, really useful. And it makes it a lot easier than having to uh, find the DMN table key and that sort of thing. If you are the kind of person who, uh, let's say, doesn't necessarily know the name or the, of the DMN tables or doesn't have access to them, but knows that they need to add to this model. 
And of course, a really good one um, is uh, user task forms that are really common. So we obviously, I think I've done a lot of POCs and in my time, there's almost always an approvals task or a document upload task or something. And this, of course, would be made a lot faster, a lot quicker for everyone if we have this really standard template that you can say, put this, uh, um, uh, put this task in there, use the template for user task forms for approval, and then you can move on because it's a very standard thing to do. Okay, uh, now, uh, good, the demo time. Now I can get rid of these uh, dodgy slides and uh, let's see if I can try and get this thing looking okay. So uh, let's start off with this. Can you see it okay? Okay, so um, <laughs> what we see, let's see, yeah. Let's just zoom out a bit. Okay, so what we see here is basically uh, I have the Komodo modeler downloaded and uh, it is in this lovely directory. And um, on the uh, on here we have we can just open this up. So I'll start this. Hopefully this will actually look at least slightly okay. Um, uh, so the best. I'll just I'll try and work with it. Um, so when we start the Komodo modeler, we can create one of the three. Um, uh, OMG standards that Comunda is uh, uh, the Comunda engine implements. So I would maybe suggest if you're interested in those, take a look. Uh, for now, I'm not going to really touch on anything except for BPMN. And with BPMN, we have uh, let's see a start task. Uh, let's see, there's got to be a way to try and resize that better. Um, do to do. I'm going to actually try and tinker with this for a few seconds because it's going to be a lot harder than the slides were. Do, do, do. Let's see. Um, well, we can kind of work with it, I guess. I can also pick up, uh, you try to you to try to uh, configure that and uh, I can uh, pick up on some of the questions we got already. So, um, before uh, Niall's going to showcase this stuff, let me quickly go through the things we, we saw here uh, in uh, the questions we had in chat already. So um, one, uh, one guy is asking, um, is there an estimate on extending the templating? We are really looking forward using that, but we have to wait for collectivity and task support. So currently right now, element template is a really exciting idea and it's something which is which works on the task level like you can extend tasks with input output mappings and stuff the um, the stuff that there's something that don't that don't work yet which is like uh, actually mapping it to message definitions for instance for events or also um, mapping it to collectivity stuff so um, it really depends on on your input like you, if you approach us on the forums, I'm going to send the link around later, or also like uh, on, on the other input channels you have, what is the actual stuff you want to see next? So um, there is no estimate when that stuff is actually going to be finished because it's too exciting and too, too, too much stuff actually to, to finish easily. So that's the stuff I can say. All right. Um, we got a better setup now, so I'm giving back to Niall. Yeah, thanks for the awesome um, de uh, detour there, uh, Nico. So, yeah, so as I mentioned, this is the uh, command modeler, uh, as you would if you downloaded it. And I'm just really going to quickly create a really simple model that is a service task. Uh, once I can find the morph, service task, fantastic. So as somebody who has a service task, I have all sorts of really fun abilities that are available here on um, the left here, or sorry, on the right, which is the properties panel. And here I can do all sorts of fun stuff, like I can do an implementation of the Java class and type in some sort of thing there, that's a Java class. I can also use the async before and after um, uh, tick boxes as well. Um, some people don't know what they do, which is always very interesting, and but they do exist. We also have the ability to create listeners and input output mapping for local variables and things. And of course, add properties in the extensions section. So this is, uh, for our little demo purposes, this is too much stuff. So the very, very first thing that I would like to create in my uh, shiny new um, template is I'm simply going to create a scenario where I don't want people to choose any other implementation except for Java class. Um, so 
that's my very, very first little thing I'm going to create. And I'm going to start by opening up um, do, 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 this guy here. Um, OK, and uh, this is, if everyone can see it OK, this is a JSON. Well, it will be when I select it. Uh, this is Sublime Text, and I'm just, where is, um, do, 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 JSON. Cool. So this is a, a JSON file again, and I'm just going to create a template here and then save it into the directory. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, give this guy a name. I'm going to just call it um, Java class. Okay. And we are going to give it an ID, of course. Uh, so the name is actually what's going to appear on the um, on the dropdown when we have the ele uh, uh, elements available. So I'm going to call this. Um, uh, let's say. Let's just go with the uh, <laughs> classic. And okay, so now I've given it the simple definition, but now I actually obviously a Java class in um, BPMN can only really be added to uh, one task type. Uh, well, okay, the important task type of the uh, service task, strictly not the only one. And I'm going to specify that, that this applies to, and whoops. And now I can actually add the specific symbols that this template will be, um, will be available for. And in this case, it's just going to be, let's see. Um, so what this string I'm typing in now is actually the, BPMN standard um, description of the task. So in the BPMN XML, you will see uh, BPMN service task. And that's how we're going to be able to uh, associate these. Um, so I now want to sort of make sure that um, I, I guess I only have a Java thing to to be able to edit. So I'm going to add um, a label, I guess, for this particular part of the element. And it's going to be label. Um, it's going to be a little more explicit. It's going to say Java uh, package name because we want the full name. And oopsie. And maybe I will grab a few bits and pieces to make things a little quicker because I'm going to paste stuff. So I've defined the type as um, a string. I've defined the fact it's edible as true. And here's the important part. I've set the binding up. So the binding is, is a property and it's a commander class. And again, that is in the XML. So if I were to go back to the modeler, for instance, and I can see this guy here, it is binding to an existing element called a Java class. So um, that should, uh, that'll probably be enough for right now. So I will just um, see if, see if my JSON was okay. Um, I have very high hopes indeed. Um, <laughs> if uh, hopefully Nico can spot any problems. So the thing yeah. It's not. It's it's not yet. I mean, what the the stuff you're essentially missing is like the, the properties section. Oh, of course, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, you need to wrap all those uh, custom properties. Yeah. Um, to. Yeah, actually, got, it, got, got it. Yeah. Got it. So I got. A, I actually forgot the properties. Properties uh, it needs some brackets and see. Luckily, uh, Nico, my uh, human. Okay, and do do do, and I need some more brackets there, and one more here, and that should give us the properties. Okay, great. So um, that's given us the properties that are of this particular uh, class as well, um, and of course. Okay, so now um, I've created my first little uh, template uh, with, the, with the help of Nico, of course, and uh, it basically does a simple thing. It applies to service tasks, and it's telling me that when 
uh, we have a label for something. It's good. This is the label. It's string. It's going to be editable and it's bound to this particular uh, property, which is class type. So I'm just going to click save and I'm going to go to here. I'm going to go to the template, uh, template demo directory. And here is my um, come on the modeler. Uh, inside the resources, we need to just simply create an element uh, template templates um, folder. And then in there, I'll just save this as, um, let's say, Java class JSON file. Okay. So as you can see, there is no, the, the, the model currently has no idea that templates exist. But as soon as I restart this guy, uh, let's actually save this. Why not? And I'm going to call this service. Save. Great. So once I restart that, um, it's going to check that directory and it's going to look for a JSON file there. And once it finds it, let's see, I'm going to open the service guy. So once I click here, we should see now that this drop down is now available. Okay, so what does it do? Well, it gives us the name of our template, which is Java class. And when I click on it, you can now see that this template requires me to put in um, a package name, and that's pretty okay. Um, now, the nice thing as well, you can actually add specific restrictions to this. So let's uh, go back to our um, simple little case here, and I'm going to um, do, 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 take a look at this and find some properties that are constraints. There we go. So in addition to um, within the properties, you can actually add specific constraints for um, a given uh, definition. So here I'm actually going to, after the type, I'm going to add constraints. And what I've pasted here is just to say, actually, we don't want this to be empty. So that's true, but we also, and this is a really nice little feature, we can add a pattern. So we can say, we don't just want any old stuff in here. We actually need a package name. And uh, because Commanda stuff starts off with something like that, that's the value that we have to start off with. And in fact, we can even have a message. And these pack patterns can also be um, regular expressions um, and they can make sure that what gets put in there is exactly what's expected in order to make the thing work. So if I save that, I just need to restart the modeler. And once I start it back up, it'll get those changes immediately. Um, it'll just, again, read that file again and um, open the service task. And now if we select Java class, which is actually already selected, we can then sort of type in some stuff and we get our message saying, oh, this is not a package name. So commanda dot oh and hooray we can we're actually allowed to put our stuff in there okay um so that's a really sort of simple example of how to create these uh where i actually got these from uh you can actually go to um the docs and if you're interested in basically all the bits and pieces in here uh you can actually find them under oops wrong one modeler and you have commanda modeler and we have the uh element template section here. And here is where you're going to actually find the link to the, docu the to the detailed documentation on GitHub with some examples, of course. And uh, so for instance, if we look down here, we'll find stuff like why I use the name, how apply to works. Uh, we also have down here uh, labels, how binding works. Uh, the constraints that you can add. So all the things we, we, we showed. Um, yeah. Uh, Nico, do you have any uh, comments or things that uh, you might want to mention before I uh, move on to the, the showing um, Jakob's fun stuff? I'm looking for the uh, more elaborate examples. I'm looking forward. So uh, obviously, uh, we do have more elaborate examples uh, um, that if you were at the other webinar, you may have seen. So we have here, do do do. where are we gone? Not there. Um, do, do, do. There we go. So here we have another much bigger JSON file, which has loads of different templates in it. And I'm actually going to get rid of the one we currently have. And I'm going to save this one just to kind of show you the bits and pieces that are possible. Um, 
Okay, so I'm going to just uh, save as. And again, I'm going to go to my documents and I'm going to um, here in the modeler, resources, element templates, and I'm just going to save Jakob's thing. So a few of the things you can see here is we have an email task. We have a, um, let's see, we have doo -doo -doo, a Twitter task, approval task. We have some, some of the kind of things we talked about earlier. And I'm just going to restart this um, modeler again, just to show you how I picked that up and show you some of the sort of really cool things you can actually accomplish when you use these properties. Um, so again, I'm just going to open up my little service task, um, selecting this guy. So uh, yeah, now we have an unknown template. Awesome. So um, the very first thing I want to do is change this to a send task. And in send task, we have we can still obviously just create the regular, all the usual stuff that's available, but the templates are in addition. So we have two things here. We have an email task and a Twitter task. Selecting the email task will suddenly come up with these custom fields. We have the class that actually gets run right there and it's read only because we don't want people messing around with it. We have a sender that might be required. And we also have a receiver as well and a subject. And these are all required uh, for this class in order to run. We also have, this is quite nice, um, the body uh, is in free marker. So you can end up using uh, variables that are in the context as part of um, sort of uh, uh, templates that act based on data in runtime rather than having to hard code all this stuff, which is really, really handy. And then of course we have a result status as well. So all this would actually, and works perfectly. This, this is available, I'm like 90% sure somewhere. Um, so you can try this out. This all works perfectly fine. Uh, we also have a Twitter task here example. And again, all this requires is we have, we already have a process, uh, sorry, um, uh, a Java class that actually tweets things. And the only thing that we need to do, we've already done the hard work of actually writing that class. So from a design point of view, the only thing we need to do here is uh, let someone tweet something. And again, you could add stuff like constraints in there to make sure it's the right number of characters and you could uh, make it a lot easier to run these. Uh, another really nice one is uh, the templating for um, uh, business rules tasks. So usually, um, actually uh, business rules tasks are not hard to implement. Uh, you can simply do them by selecting DMN as an example, and putting in the reference of the um, DMN table, um, then the results variable of um, the result. But things get a little more complicated then, because as soon as we have that, we have to make a decision about what we expect the output of that table to be. In this case, it could be a single entry, meaning we'll only get one result from this table, or a collection. And that requires a certain knowledge of the table. So um, a nice idea is always to allow our dish decider guy here to a template. And in this scenario, we have a, a specific list of required input. It can only be one of these. So we can, it's a good candidate for a dropdown as well as any number of guests. And of course we have a read only mapping here for a single result because we know this table is only going to give us a single result. Okay. Um, Nico, any uh, happy enough of that? Or, yeah, that is advanced enough for you? Um, yeah, one thing that's uh, particular, particular uh, interesting is obviously you can always type like constants, like numbers in there, right? But just because of the nature of the engine, you can always type expressions, like expressions yeah. everywhere. So especially for the, for the template, you can like for the mail template, that's where now uh, showed it. But um, also for the number of guests as in the, as in the business rule task example or wherever, you can, you can the, the, as part of element templates, you're going to define that's a requirement, right? The requirement is that you need to provide a number of guests. You need to provide a certain result variable. You need to provide a season. But how to get that stuff actually is again up to you. It's up, up to the guy who actually the, like creates the process, like where he actually gets that stuff from. That's again up to him. If you if you want that, have to. But that's a kind of nice insight. Yeah, super. Thanks, Hugo. Um, so another thing I want to sort of add in is just the. Uh, 
the user task that um, Jakob again created. And again, we can do all sorts of fun stuff with user tasks, um, but the template here of approval task, as I mentioned, uh, has a predefined form, which is really important because again, uh, if you're going to have very similar tasks all the time, you're going to want to reuse that. You don't want someone wondering, should I be using some sort of template? It's really, really useful for that. And of course, if there's only a specific uh, provers available, or actually in a, in a more likely case might be certain groups, certain user groups that you want to give this as an approver to, then you can do that and then add uh, the request text. Again, the request text could be free marker. So it could actually just be a, um, from the context of the runtime um, uh, process instance. And we also have the result variable that is eligible and the approval comments, which are return values as well. So, and those again are probably stored in the approval uh, HTML. Okay. So, Nico, do we have... Uh, so we just maybe want to discuss briefly this lovely... Uh, that JSON that we actually created for that and just bits and pieces that um, I'm sort of interested in. Uh, like, let's say, to do, do the email example is quite a nice one. So we have, so we have the request format. We have a script format there, a free marker. Um, out of interest, what are the script sort of formats that are available actually? Well, the engine itself is extendable, right? So free marker is one of the, one of the script language and standard supports. So um, the, there's other languages, like you can use JavaScript if you're interested to like, execute this stuff in JavaScript. If you're like a non-Java guy, you only use a REST API plus a modeler, so you can still have everything in JavaScript. You could use Ruby and uh, Python or whatever runs on the JVM as well. Um, one other thing that might be interesting, like, uh, and maybe you can pick it up, but just uh, spoil it right now. So uh, you guys might wonder what's actually happening if you create those stars, those, those uh, those like properties right and looking at the properties it has this uh, what you said now like this important binding property so or binding configuration so essentially what's happening was cast those custom fields obviously the, there's no magic behind it the Kamunda has all the power to actually do whatever on the on the modeling level map variables uh, to each other there's a lot of extension points and way to actually configure so what we're going to do is um or what, what the only stuff that custom elements or element templates does is it's going to map whatever the user inputs which is domain specific to something again domain specific specific to the implementation of service task or whatever behind us um so in this case there's uh, it's just going to map to the kamunda async before property so um, it's going to map to a boolean right maybe in in a certain domain like uh, german insurance right people uh, have a have a harder time to understand the the like why it has st stuff to be async or synchronous maybe there's a different uh, term like domain specific right maybe it's uh, much easier to understand that the, that the mail that the mail uh, task is actually uh, like, do you want us the, the, to send the mail asynchronously or do you care about the result right now? So That makes sense. Um, so I know it's probably an annoying question because this is such a new feature, but uh, what are the plans for the future with this particular um, feature? Because obviously it's, right now it's, it's really powerful. You can probably see from the, just the examples we created just to showcase the bits and pieces that are possible. But even though it's, it's it's already fairly powerful, I think you already have a a, a roadmap in mind, or at least you have a, a, the idea to extend this further. So you want to give me a yeah. So there's uh, many different ways we can go. Um, people in the chat are asking for like actually having support for connectors, which is um, for connector, especially the standardization and also like the value of having those those uh, those templates is really high because connector is something connector itself is something generic right it's going to be a soap connector you're just going to gonna um, actually configure or you have a mail connector or whatever a twitter connector so that's something that is really interesting people are asking for actually being able to uh, to um, to uh, configure for instance like uh, message definitions on start events like people want to have like certain this, the, the common extension for mess message definitions there's also other ways like uh, things for instance where uh, make it easier to get started with element templates. For instance, one thing we can look into a farther future is like maybe there might be something where people can, instead of writing JSON, they can just configure the element templates. They have modeled something in the modeler and um, doing something like basically saving that stuff as a new template. Um, 
other people are also asking like how can i also like the dynamic depopulate certain things like can i populate the amount of users from the applicable for a, for a, for a, based on the candidate group from rest api these things are like it's too exciting to actually have a concrete roadmap right now what we're what we're doing right now is we're we're collecting a lot of feedback on this we already got a lot of feedback um and i'm i'm actually going to um, paste the url like the, the kind of feedback the most important things we already got and like stuff people request so uh, I'm going to paste it in the chat. So whenever there's something else we, we missed or something else is super urgent, feel free to actually address us, talk to us, and then that's how we actually put those things on the roadmap. That's awesome. Thanks for that, Fidinko. So um, we're into the last uh, 50 minutes or so of the uh, webinar, and, uh, uh, and there's been no fatalities, which is always a success in my book. Um, so um, I guess we could take a look at some questions now. Uh, the most popular question we have by far is uh, people pointing out that I spelled labeling correctly earlier, <laughs> but it's, it's good to know that uh, an English native speaker still can't get away with that sort of thing, despite the sheer number of uh, people from Berlin I saw on the, uh, on the chat, but thank you for pointing that out, I appreciate it. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just stop sharing my screen now, and myself and Nico will look through some questions questions. If you have any uh, and you haven't typed them in yet, please feel free to do that. Um, and uh, we'll get to as many as we can in, uh, I think Nico might have already read ahead and answered a few of them, which is really useful. Um, so we'll, what we'll do is we'll try and see which ones we can answer. I'll go back and forth. And so uh, Nico, do you want to take this one? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, one, one question is about like um, restrictions to modeling possibilities. Um, there's two ways how we can like uh, I could interpret that question. One question, uh, one one thing you saw when when actually uh, like switching to a certain element template. That's when all the other like all the implementation like Kamunda specific details actually vanish, because the element template. There's two different modes where you can actually have uh, like element templates. Define only those custom fields, make nothing else available, or make everything else available as well. Which means like. You have those custom fields, but you can still maintain listeners. You can still maintain any kinds of technical properties. And it's actually about the guy who created those templates to actually configure that. So that's one way how to interpret the, 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 uh, the question regarding the um, um, restriction of model link capabilities. Um, the, again, it's, it's really important. Like there's no magic. There's no uh, new Kamunda um, specific like XML extension on top of the stuff the Kamunda engine already supports. Everything that like can be defined through an element template that's actually shown as a as a control as part of the Kamunda modeler, it's gonna map back to an uh, to, to the actual currently existing property. For instance, if I have uh, something like async before, it's a Kamunda attribute. So it's gonna map into the BPMN 2.0 XML as a Kamunda extension attribute. If I have a certain variable and I'm actually gonna take that variable um, and I'm going to map it into an input-output mapping because that's the stuff the implementation expects. So that's uh, the, the the kind of that's the kind of understanding. This, this stuff that is might be a bit uh, like uh, tricky to to grasp. But there is no magic. It's just about mapping the the, the custom domain-specific things that that are easy for the users to actually maintain and model into the more complex and much more options on the Kamunda side. That's a uh, one question. Thanks, then, Nico. Um... There's a few more coming. Um, uh, so I guess for me, I, I, I'm looking for any non-technical questions because that's why I have Nico here to do all the hard work. Um, so sorry for the brief silence. I know um, I think if you're in radio or something, you're always told like avoid dead air and talk nonstop. But uh, it's so hard to read and, talk, and not and not talk. Luckily, Nico has saved me. <laughs> Go ahead, Nico. Yeah. So um, there's one one really interesting question that was uh, raised already a few times. Like uh, element templates, currently they are they are. Uh, Basically, as, as you saw uh, in our demoing, it's, it's part of the Kamuna modeler. You either install that JSON or you don't have it, right? The, the, the modeler can deal with something. The modeler can deal with the fact that I have the templates and I used it, but Nile doesn't. Because whatever happens, like in the end, as I said, all the stuff that user inputs is actually mapped to the Kamunda like specific extensions. So Nile, if he doesn't have the templates, he sees still all the details. He can continue to work with the model. He just doesn't have the domain specific hints. The question I, I just picked up is like, uh, is there plans to load the extension at startup from the URL? That is something that is really powerful because what that enables people to um, basically is to um, 
provide those templates centrally for a certain domain for a certain number of users, right? And then basically fetch that on startup and uh, make sure when the templates change, that's when also next time the user starts up, he actually gets a new version of the template. So it's something we don't have right now. There's some other questions uh, like related to that, like how to actually add element templates into the life cycle. There's like certain people that suggest, well, just package, instead of loading it from URL, why not just package a modeler for a certain domain for certain projects, right? And that already contains the templates you can use. And because of the nature of templates and also the nature, like if you want to standardize the nature of uh, the nature of the templates and also the nature of the implementation means those templates, they are going to be quite stable at a certain point, right? We're not going to, we're, we're not talking about like developing those templates at the same time as actually modeling, but it's going to be something where some amount of effort is actually invested into stabilizing the templates in the same way that actually the implementation, whatever is behind is actually kind of stabilized. And that's when, that's the only time when actually people can actually start to use it in a larger scale, like the citizen developers, we call them. So that was uh, one question I picked up. Um, if you've got a, a question, uh, found an interesting question, Niall, um, I would just uh, hand over to you. Otherwise, I have a... Um, well, I can maybe mention offhand that um, I think someone has asked uh, whether this stuff is available, um, the stuff that we're talking about. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's available on GitHub. Um, I think so. The template I used there with the user tasks and the other bits and pieces, um, they were actually available. Um, They're made available, um, uh, I think, during the release webinar by Jakob. So uh, what I will do is I will um, try and add those uh, maybe in the email we send around after this uh, webinar with the link to the recording. What I'll do is I'll try and add some of those links to where the uh, where you can find the slide deck and the, um, the templates as well. So if you're looking for those, they're of course free and open. Um, okay, um, there's probably one question that I sort of have actually funnily enough is that so we have obviously we have templating available for sequence flows we have them for various task types um i think we found out recently that what we don't have at the moment is support for uh events or do we it, we don't really don't seem to do that yet i'm wondering is that is that something coming up how far along are we with that yeah uh we don't have it yet that's a, that's a short answer and there's also a good explanation why we don't have it yet in the old Camona model, I picked that up, right? The, like the, the, the Eclipse plugin. Um, it was actually called custom tasks. So um, just with this model, we evolved it with something that is really general to all kind of things. So when we started with custom tasks uh, right now, and it's, uh, you, you can have all those like uh, low level extensions like Camunda Async uh, and so on. These kind of extensions you can already do on the events. And the stuff you cannot do yet, uh, and that, but that's the stuff a lot of people uh, are asking for which makes the probability quite high. We're actually going to pick up on that and actually work on it is uh, to configure uh, like the event definitions, right? From the BPMN like perspective, there's actually two things. It's always going to be an event, which is a start or a, uh, which is a start event or deleted event. Then it's going to be a throw or catch event. And these events carry around definitions. So what we don't support yet is like altering those definitions. For instance, I'm going to, I have a throwing signal in that event. What is the actual, like, the definition behind it? Like, what's the code? What's the error code? What, these kind of things. That's the stuff we don't have implemented yet, but that's the stuff we're looking for in the future. And um, just another quick question on, um, so right now, obviously, we have uh, this JSON file that somebody needs to go and write, and then um, they need to either maintain that or keep it somewhere kind of useful. Um, is there a plan going forward to make this an easier prospect than asking somebody to develop a, a JSON file every time they want to change a, um, um, a, a, a property of a template? It's also a question we're getting asked quite a lot. Um, we're, we're mostly asking, uh, getting asked these kind of questions for people that are like more coming from the model-driven domain. Um, for, for us, especially like developing here, like quite uh, like highly technical guys, 
Um, it, it always feels a bit odd because whenever you, you, you create those toolboxes, um, you, you can only have a certain, like a certain user group in mind. And sometimes it's also just uh, like a certain, like whenever you make stuff visually accessible and playing around with it, either the, 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 the user interface for this gets extremely complex. That's a point when even like, even though it's visually, people will have a hard time understanding or if it remains, if it remains simple, um, it's going to be, it's going to be something that is, uh, that's really limited. So what we definitely want to look into uh, is um, making that available for like also modeling and maybe just save the current task as it is as a template. That is something that could happen in the future. We're not going to promise something right now. Maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's also going to be somewhere else. Maybe there's going to be a web application where you just like, you know, can click around and just configure that stuff. And uh, so the, the question is always where to integrate those tools, right? Um, integrate those tools in the Camona model, integrate it somewhere else. Maybe if someone from the community is just picking up on this and just creating a quick generator, who knows? Yeah. Of course, it'd be really useful for community members, those who are listening along to create these, like play with these templates, show us what you can create. Because as you've seen, it's, it's already fairly powerful, but it's so new. We're really wondering what kind of use cases come out of this and also what kind of things people really, really need. Um, okay, so uh, we have about five minutes left. So if anyone has any more questions, uh, add them now. We might just get to them. Um, I'm going to have a, a, a wee look there. Um, uh, is templating of subprocesses possible? I don't think it is at the moment, does it? Yeah, it is. Like again, like a subprocess is an ordinary BPMN element, right? Um, the the difference is subprocess contains children, so there's a. I mean, there, there's technically two different kinds of subprocesses depending on where people are coming from. They confuse subprocess with a collectivity, right? Yeah. Um, a collectivity, a collectivity is like the basically like the calling in another process. A subprocess is like a embedded inside the process it's containing another uh, like a number of like child elements so depending on where people are coming from uh, if people are asking for like is collectivity already uh, already uh, like supported the answer is yes a lot of collectivity um like like customizing collectivity is supported until a certain extent there's certain things like passing a business key passing like variables that's stuff that is not supported yet for the sub process embedded version i'm talking about here um, templating doesn't make too much sense because like it doesn't have much sem I mean it, it technically does like if you want to have a template like repetition and stuff but that's like the one thing we look forward to, like we look for people actually asking for that first okay thanks Nico um, okay um, I think we've um, I think we've answered all the questions we can I'm trying to look for a few more that I might be able to know the answer to uh, so far, I am a one for zero. I think. Oh, sorry, you've you're, you've got like four, and I've got. I think I answered one about labels. So I'll I'll give you the give you the final word, I guess, on this, Nico. Yeah. So so some more question on on how actually that stuff is gonna be used. But there's one really interesting question there, which is like, uh, given a certain workflow, like, uh, do you actually? What's really interesting also in terms of tooling, right? Like, do I know the variables that are actually like used in the workflow? That's something that that is something that would be absolutely powerful because what like in especially like other domains right people start data driven first and then they go into the process for us it's uh, it's a bit a different way around like we go process first and then you follow up with the data so it's something that would be really powerful uh, huge like a huge challenge there is like in which way you actually want to do that right obviously there could be extensions like uh, defining for a certain process that could can only be one variable that could be the easiest way but again like it's it's that's the stuff that is like hardly applicable for the majority of use cases. So um, one thing that could be really interesting is like based on certain expressions and so on, figure out what variables are already there. So it's always going to be fuzzy. It's never going to be the truth. Um, and it's also not related to element templates at all. But uh, it's, it's also something that, again, like helps users to build better processes. We're also looking forward to these kind of, kind of uh, like suggestions because in the end, we want to build, build like a great platform and a great model. So. There's there's actually no more uh, no more questions right now, um, at least from the from the things that are like uh, I feel like not answered. Um, I already say goodbye and I uh, follow back to Nile. Yeah. Bring back to Nile. 
Thanks for that, Nico. Um, yeah, so first of all, thank you so many people for, um, for showing up. We have, a, we have a huge number of people, uh, which is really nice to see. And it's really, really nice to do what is actually a, a far more technical webinar than we're used to. And we're definitely planning on doing a lot more of these. So uh, the uh, turnout was really, really good considering that. Um, so myself and Nico, we shall say goodbye and um, talk to you again soon. Uh, if you guys are interested in contacting us about anything, uh, go to uh, Conda.com for any sort of commercial bits and pieces you might have, uh, or Conda.org for uh, the uh, community-orientated open source um, uh, discussions and downloading uh, all of that um, uh, all of the things we mentioned today, like the modeler and learning about all the examples that we talked about. Great. So uh, thanks again for coming along and um, I'll talk to you all soon, I'm sure. Um, goodbye.